Are you worried about fumes and particulate your machine releases during 3D printing? The rise of more capable machines democratized the use of technical materials. Just looking around, the use of nylon, ABS, ASA, polycarbonate has skyrocketed thanks to more capable printers at the reach of many pockets. Similar to mighty Greek heroes, these materials have a weak point, being the emissions of ultrafine particles and volatile organic compounds. Nylon and PET-G emits caprolactam, ABS and ASA styrene, and polycarbonate BPA. Over long multi-hour or multi-day prints, these UFP and Vox build up in the air around the printer. Even if the research around those particles in the 3D printing space is somewhat limited and often lack in solutions viable for everyone, I can tell you for sure that it's good practice to contain such propagation. How small are these particles? For scale, visualize a human hair. Then imagine a small ball a thousand times thinner. There you go. Can you tell if your printer emits particulate? Sort of. The most telling outcome is white soot or gunk building up in the internal surfaces of the printer. And if wiping down panels is easy, the real challenge is to capture particles suspended midair. Some of you will wonder, I can't smell or see anything. Am I safe? Well, long story short, if you can't perceive something, it doesn't mean it's not there. Humans do not have refined smell as hunting dogs, nor the eyesight to see fine particles. We all know that cars exhaust fumes are not good for us, but in reality we can't see the tiny particles coming from the muffler. Unless you have a modified diesel. In that case you can see, smell, and hear that something smelly is going on. In the 3D printing space, there have been huge efforts to tame and contain this particulate. Mostly single pass, carbon activated pass placed upstream of fan exhaust. Even if these filters do something, the particles are so minuscule that most don't get captured, or better said, absorbed. The Voron community has been the most active on trying to solve this issue with DIY solutions, from single pass filter outlets to the pretty awesome Nevermore filter. Which of the two results to be more effective? As it turns out, the multi-pass filter with carbon activated pellets result to be the best. During long hour prints, the air gets continuously recirculated, increasing the absorption rate. Today we're looking at the most recent improvement of these recirculating filters, and from my humble 10 year printing experience, the most effective yet. The bento box. Why is this piece of equipment so good? To start with, the tower configuration. I found that this design is easily fitable to many printers, a huge plus. Then this easy stackable solution. You can easily bolt down the fan section and still be able to take out for replacement or inspection the top HEPA filter and the carbon section. And yes, the bento box has a HEPA filter. In my experience, it has a reason. This particular one was changed after 30 hours of ASA printing. Better have this gun captured here rather than in the printing internals. For last, the fan section. There are many mods for it if you want to choose a different fan solution. I use the original configuration because it works plenty with a small T-top wire connector for reducing number of cables. You can supply power externally from a small brick. I will leave a link down below so you can look up the type and all the parts be sure to buy one that is the same voltage of your fans. If you want to save a couple bucks, you can tamper with a 3D printing power supply and draw power from there. I use this solution on my custom 3D printers where on Prusa Minis and Bamboo Lab, I prefer an external outlet. If for some reason you want to increase flow, you can install 4028 fans instead of 4020 fans. But those screamers are hard to find in two pin configuration and aren't cheap. Speaking of cost, this is a DIY solution. In my opinion, very affordable for the results. Looking at the bill of materials, you will be out of pocket around 30 bucks depending where you source your parts. A carbon pellet bag isn't cheap, but if you have one printer, it will last you months. If you have multiple printers, carbon pellet cost spreads out to a couple bucks for printer. Once printed the parts, assembly is straightforward and takes less than half an hour from start to finish. 
The designer through the frame provides detailed assembly instructions so you will have a bulletproof experience. The most time consuming part of the build will be the insertion of tiny magnets. I glued mine in place and you will have to be sure to match polarity to not screw up later. These clever solutions allow you to stack and swap top sections. Filling the carbon pellets in the carbon section is a breeze, but be aware that most pellets create some dust. Put a mat or something to catch this dust every time you change pellets. And on a side note, buy non-acid activated pellets. The acid activated ones are known to rust linear rails. On the other side, HEPA filters are quite cheap and you can buy about 10 for 10 bucks. Once assembled, you can figure out a way to place it in your 3D printer. The bento box was designed originally for the Bamboo Lab series, but I use them also in Closet Cruelty and Prusas. How effective is the suction of this bento box? Even at first glance, it could seem it does very little. We have to remember that these particles are tiny. I did a dumb smoke test, and as you can see, 24020 draw enough flow. Imagine this continuous movement of air over hours. Is this solution 100% effective? Well, to be honest, no. Most printers on the market have still small gaps, and you should expect some leaking. If you want a bulletproof solution, the best way remains to create a negative pressure in the chamber and exhaust air outside your building. Personally, this bento box helped incredibly in my day by day. I print on regular basis technical filaments for prototyping and client projects and the detectable order in the printer room decreased to not perceivable levels. And I noticed that I have to clean less often the motion system and the internal surfaces of the printers. And as a plus, I was looking for a long time to make something similar, but this one saved me a ton of hours not having to develop a solution that fit my needs. I will leave a link below if you want to make your own. For today is all people, thank you for watching and I will see you in the next one.